Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello all, welcome to the seventh lecture on Raman spectroscopy. In the last lecture, we discussed two important aspects of vibrational Raman spectroscopy and these two aspects are one is Raman activity of vibrations. And the second aspect is rule of mutual exclusion. So, in today's lecture, we will look into the details of vibrational Raman spectrum. For every vibrational mode, we can write the energy expression in the form of nu bar equals v plus half nu bar e minus v plus half whole squared nu bar e chi e. So, here the nu bar e is the equilibrium vibrational frequency and this chi e is the anharmonicity. So, this is a general expression independent of the shape of the molecule or the nature of the vibration and the selection rule is delta v equals 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 dot dot dot. So, the selection rule is the same for Raman as for infrared spectroscopy and the probability of this plus minus 2 or plus minus 3 decreases rapidly. So, if the selection rule is applied to the energy expression to obtain the transition energies. What we get is, let us say if the transition is from v equals 0 to v equals 1, then this transition energy we can write as delta E fundamental because this is the fundamental transition and this will be nu bar E times 1 minus 2 chi e and the unit is in wave numbers. Now, instead of the fundamental transition, if we think about the overtone, so we have v equals 0 to v equals 2. So, in this case, we will write delta e overtone that we can write as 2 nu bar e times 1 minus 3 chi e again the unit is in wave numbers. And the other transition that we can get is a hot band in that case it starts from an excited vibrational level that is v equals 1 to v equals 2. So, in this case we will write delta e hot band this will be nu bar e times 1 minus 4 chi e and the unit is in wave numbers. So, since the Raman scattered light is in any case of low intensity, we can ignore the weaker effects such as the overtones or the hot bands. So, we would restrict our discussion today on the fundamental transitions. The Raman lines 
would appear at distances from the exciting line corresponding to each fundamental vibration. In other words, we can write nu bar of fundamental will be equal to nu bar excitation plus delta E fundamental. So, delta E fundamental is the one which we wrote here and again the unit is in wave numbers. So, this is plus minus. So, the minus sign which we have here represents the Stokes lines and the plus sign represents the anti Stokes lines. So, for the Stokes lines the molecule has gained energy at the expense of the radiation and that is the reason why the frequency or the wave number for the Stokes lines is less than that of the nu bar excitation. The anti Stokes lines are often too weak to be observed as very few molecules exist in the V equals 1 state at room temperature. The vibrational Raman spectrum of a molecule shows a series of reasonably intense lines to the low frequency side of the exciting line with a much weaker mirror image series on the high frequency side. And the separation of each line from the center of the exciting line provides the Raman active vibrational frequencies of the molecule. So, this figure shows the Raman spectrum of chloroform or CHCl3. So, the Raman lines appear at 6 different places. So, we have lines at 262 wave numbers, we have another line at 366, then another line at 668, then we have another line at 761 and this 1216 wave numbers and we have one at 3019 wave numbers. So, these are the lines on the low frequency side or the stroke side of the exciting line and there will be lines in the anti stroke sides. For example, we will get another line around 262, but at higher frequency of the exciting line, but this intensity will be much lower than the 262 wave number line for the stroke side as we had discussed before. So, this chloroform we have 5 atoms. So, we have 3 times 5 minus 6 that is 15 minus 6 or 9 vibrations. So, we can expect 9 vibrations, but out of these 3 vibrations are doubly degenerate. So, we are left with 6 fundamental vibrations and the 6 fundamental vibrations we see here in this C in the 6 different peaks. So, here we see another molecule that is indine. So, we see the IR and the Raman spectra of indine. So, we can see that different modes are active in both IR and Raman spectrum. So, the immediate conclusion is that the molecule has no center of symmetry and this is also clear if we look into the structure of the molecule indine and we can see it has no center of symmetry. 
So, now let us move on to the vibrational rotational Raman spectroscopy. The fine structure is rarely resolved except in the case of diatomic molecule. So, we can write the energy expression as nu bar as a function of the vibrational quantum number v and the rotational quantum number j and nu bar v j equals v plus half nu bar e minus v plus half whole squared nu bar e chi e plus the rotational term that is b times j times j plus 1. So, here v can take the values of 0, 1, 2, etcetera and j can take the values of 0, 1, 2, 3, etcetera. So, we know for diatomic molecules the rotational selection rule is delta j equals plus minus 2 for Raman spectroscopy. So, now if we combine this rotational selection rule with the transition that is a fundamental transition that is v equals 0 to v equals 1, first of all we get something known as the q branch. So, for the q branch delta j equals 0. So, we can write delta E for the q branch is nu bar E times 1 minus 2 chi E wave numbers. We also get something known as the S branch. So, for the S branch delta J equals plus 2. So, we can write delta E of S branch equals nu bar E 1 minus 2 chi E. So, we are repeating what we wrote for Q branch, but we have an extra term that is plus 2 B times 2 J plus 3 wave numbers. And in this case, j equals 0, 1, 2 and so on. And we can have another branch that is the O branch. So, for the O branch we have delta j equals minus 2. So, we can write delta E for the O branch. So, we will write the first term as that of the Q branch nu bar E 1 minus 2 chi E and then we have minus 2 B 2 J plus 3 wave numbers and for this case J equals 2, 3, 4 dot dot dot. So, thus the Stokes lines lying at the lower frequency or the lower wave number side of the exciting radiation will occur. So, for the Q branch the Stokes line will occur at we can write. So, we know for Q branch delta j equals 0. So, it will occur at delta nu or rather nu bar excitation minus delta E q. So, we know the expression for delta E q. So, we can write nu bar excitation minus nu bar E 1 minus 2 chi E and this the unit here is wave numbers. Similarly, for the S branch where we have delta J equals plus 2. So, it will occur at nu bar excitation minus delta E 
s. So, it will be nu bar excitation minus nu bar e 1 minus 2 chi e and then we have plus 2 b 2 j plus 3 wave numbers. And for the O branch where delta j equals minus 2, the Stokes lines will occur at nu bar excitation minus delta E 0 or delta E O and which is nu bar excitation minus nu bar E 1 minus 2 chi E minus 2 B times 2 J plus 3 wave numbers. So, again we can see for this particular case j equals 0, 1, 2 dot 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 and for the O branch it is j equals 2, 3, 4 so on. So, the new excitation that we are writing in these expressions, this new excitation is the frequency of the incident radiation. So, here you can see a spectrum the rotation vibration Raman lines are shown in the red and the pure rotation lines are shown on the right in blue. The O, Q and the S branches are shown and we can see the rotational vibrational Raman band is shifted from the excitation frequency by this nu bar E times 1 minus 2 chi E. The presence of the strong Q branch in the Raman spectrum is to be noted and compared with the P and the R branches only which occur for a diatomic molecule in the infrared. The analysis of the O and R branches in the Raman spectrum can provide us the value of the rotational constant that is B and once we know B, we can get the moment of inertia that is I and once we know the moment of inertia, we can get the equilibrium bond length or R equilibrium. So, if we think about larger molecules, we can ignore since the fine rotational structures are not resolved for larger molecules.